The tagger, also known as a run with player or simply a stopper, is the role given to the person responsible for marking the opposition's best player. Their job is to remain disciplined and focused on their opponent in order to restrict their impact on the game. To be manned up by a human glove can often be considered the ultimate compliment, a sign that you have arrived in the game, a rite of passage for up and coming star midfielders. We have seen a number of masters of this dark art and that's what this list will be celebrating. I'm Jackson from Off The Play and here are the six best taggers of all time. First up we have Fremantle's Ryan Crowley. Creepy Crowley was the game's number one tagger between around 2010 and 2014. His size, fitness and discipline allowed him to regularly get the better of some of the game's best midfielders including Chris Judd and Gary Ablett Jr. I can remember watching him closely during the 2013 qualifying final against Geelong. Thinking outside the box, Dockers coach Ross Lyon made the decision to send Crowley to Matthew Stokes at the start of the game instead of some of the Cats' more reputable players in that side like Joel Selwood, Paul Chapman or Steve Johnson. But after Stevie J ran amok in the first quarter, Crowley was switched onto the mercurial half forward where he completely nullified him from that point. Crowley played a huge part in the Dockers' rise up the ladder and eventual grand final appearance during that period and was rewarded with the club best and fairest in 2012. Next up we have the unique individual himself, Brett Kirk. Often considered the heart and soul of the Swans during the 2000s, Brett Kirk was tremendous at shutting down the opposition's best player. He was the Swans' captain and had a huge role in the club breaking a 72 year premiership drought. The two time best and fairest winner including one in the premiership year as a tagger is a phenomenal effort. Kane Corns has been a heavily maligned personality since joining the media post an excellent AFL career. But let's not forget just how good he was at doing his role, which was running with and nullifying the opposition's best player. The super fit running machine won a premiership and four best and fairest among his 300 games. He mastered the art of not only stopping blokes, but also getting off them and was regularly one of the AFL's leading disposal winners. Tony Liberatore was one of the first players to master the role of tagging and he shut down some of the game's best midfielders during the 90s. The tough bulldog may have only been knee height to a grasshopper, standing at just 163 centimetres tall, but he had the ability to physically and mentally disintegrate the guys he played on. A best and fairest winner, and of course a Brownlow medalist. Brady Rawlings was a no fuss, no frills player during his years at North Melbourne, but internally he was rated very highly by the Kangaroos for his ability to help his side by blanketing his opponent. Rawlings won three best and fairest at the Roos, which I wouldn't have picked, would you? If the amount of best and fairest Brady Rawlings won was a trivia question, I'd be sure to get it wrong. Rawlings was another, like Corns, who had the ability to find plenty of the football the other way, keeping his opponents accountable at all times. The Mayor of Geelong and a multiple time winner of the AFL's Sexiest Player Award, Cameron Ling was an exceptional tagger. He won a best and fairest at the Cats over some star-studded teammates and was eventually a premiership captain. Ling had the job on many of the game's champions like James Hurd, Nathan Buckley, Anthony Kudafides, Ben Cousins, Shane Crawford, Adam Goods, Simon Black and Sam Mitchell. Mitchell said he was his hardest opponent, stating in an interview on Triple M that he was the disaster to play on. Mitchell stated he was fitter than me, stronger than me, heavier than me, more disciplined, and if you ever got away from him, because he played for such a good team, someone else would just tag you until he got back to you. Sounded like a tough day at the office whenever the big ginger would walk up to you. And now for some honourable mentions. North Melbourne's Ben Jacobs claimed a couple of massive scalps before his career was prematurely ended due to concussion issues. Matt DeBoer was another who claimed some high profile victims. Ed Kerno was another quality tagger. I actually had a chat with him one evening backstage at the Marnbrook footy show and he gave a couple of great insights into his career of tagging. For what it's worth, he said his hardest or most frustrating opponent to play on was North Melbourne champion Brent Harvey. He said Boomer would always be giving you little punches to the stomach and had an uncanny ability to know where the cameras were. And that's our video. If you enjoyed the content, as always, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, 
drop a like on this video and thanks very much for watching.